Hello and good morning, Jennifer. How are you doing today? I'm excellent, thank you. Oh my goodness, you you know how to bring a man or a woman to tears with with this collection of books. I mean, sixty years of my life are part of your one hundred year celebration, and it's like this. This is the ultimate gift from anybody that any fan for for anything is going to cherish for the rest of their life and they hand it forward well one so glad you feel that way that's how we felt in making it is that we wanted to make the books that were going to make us happy as fans and so i'm, I'm glad to hear that you feel that way well it, it, it has so much and, and and what i love that each one of these books has its own character and personality and of course i was drawn to the walt disney quote book because you know we, we saw things we, we we've heard interviews and things like that but the, the, this quote book i love the fact that you preserve the quotes because he was a man who loved to share his thoughts and now we we get the we get to hold them we get to to read them while looking at pictures absolutely and and one of the important pieces of that from the Walt Disney Archives staff was you know they said there are many books out there with quotes from Walt there's quotes of Walt all over the internet but could we put together a package where we could back up with an exact source every single time he said what he said so that we we know it's truly his words um, and put that in a way that is done in story thematic beats to give you a sense of who he was as a person. And, and they just did a fantastic job pulling everything together. Um, one of my favorite quotes is, no man alone can do very much of consequence without the help of others. And I think that's the backbone to all of Walt's story. He had such vision and such drive to get to these very ambitious goals and everything was always about, okay, there are obstacles in my way to, to yeah. achieve that. What do I need to do? What what resources do I need to pull together? What um, people with special talents do I need to bring into the project? What new technologies do we need to invent? Because I need to get to that goal that is very story driven. And he never gave up and he always kept going and pushed through. He was an open door, an open door for so many opportunities. People would, you know, they, they came to him with an idea and, and he believed in them. He, and, and then he would make them a part of the team and, and just to watch everything grow because, like, like you said, not one person can do this. I mean, he opened the door for that team to be shaped. One of my other favorite books is our Walt Disney and American Original, The Commemorative Edition. Mm-hmm. This was a book um, done by a biographer in the 1970s called Bob Thomas. And he was given full access from the company and the family. And that meant the memos, the recordings, the journals and diaries, any single little bit of information that told you this was the real Walt, you know, without um, there being something in between, you know, the, what the researcher could access and not. Um, and he put together this story beat of, of Walt's life that has never been outdone in any other publication. It's just truly an honest, sincere, um, emotional package that that shows you who Walt was as a person and a professional. And so for that reason, I, I say that I want this book to stay in print forever, as long as I can be part of making that a responsible thing. Um, so I, I want to uh, make sure that that is really something that people can find and appreciate. Well, there, there's so much history, but at the same time, it also serves as an invitation to get very excited about the future. That's how careful that you guys, I mean, you know, you, you guys put a lot of time and energy in making sure that this also spoke to tomorrow. Absolutely. And and I think in the story of Walt Disney, or the story of Disney, um, 100 Years of Wonder, the big coffee table book, this was done with the Walt Disney Archives in a way that they said, we don't want to tell a linear story. We want to take beats that were important to Walt, both professional and personal, and make um, those stories housing devices, where then we could talk about examples from past, present, and make the connections in between the two. And I, I really love that that's the way that we focused on it, because it gives you the opportunity to talk about technologies from the 1920s and how different innovation paths led from one thing to another that leads you to a culture where something now exists that 
it, it's just more um, more ambitious and more culturally relevant than ever before. Walt's grandson got to be a part of this, Christopher, and 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 that really you know keeps that 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 fresh open uh, door policy as well. I mean, it's for the the American original, Walt Disney and American original. I, I just love the idea that that somebody from the family was a huge part of this. Absolutely, and I have to say, there's also an audio book release of the, really? of it as well, and Christopher, as well as all of the other um, contributors to the special essays in the book read their own pieces and that is truly emotional and beautiful just to show the Walt Disney magic and how much it's still alive I mean when you, when you pick up the books and start reading the ones that were put together by John and Bruce I mean that Disney magic is right there and 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 I love the way that they were able to share the story for all ages and and I mean that because I, I want younger people to pick up these books and I want them to be able to say whoa so this was before where we are right now oh, whoa and I think what ha- helps with that, too, is um, we made the book very visually uh, enticing, right? Mm-hmm. So there's a, there's a lot of different artwork and photographs. And again, it's, it's going to bounce back and forth between a vintage, older piece and the modern day. And so just flipping through, you're going to, if Disney means something to you, you're going to flip through this and find some piece that's visually meaningful to you. And I, I guarantee you, the minute you pause on that page and start reading the story that goes with yep. it, you're going to get sucked in. <laughs> so true. Well, you, you see that in the art of coloring, Disney one, you know, Disney one hundred years of, of wonder. You can and and there, there's just so much here. You cannot race through this book at all. I kept going. I'd look at a page. I'd go back to the page. I'd look at it. I'd go back to the page. But you're right. You can You can There's so much here to take in. Absolutely. The, that art of coloring book is part of our adult coloring line. So. Part of it is that there's very small spaces to color in very methodically and and be sort of meditative as you do it. But if even just flipping through and appreciating the the character art in, in there is phenomenal because the Walt Disney Archives team again brought a lot of passion to their research in putting it together. So they they dug through vintage coloring books and old press kits and all sorts of things. So you can go from a 1920s. Alice comedy yeah. final frame to, you know, Treasure Island production art to um, a, a modern day Pixar film. And it's just lovely. So now let, let's let's think about the listeners for a moment because we're talking about four books. Can they get this in a set or do they have to get them individually? They're all individual. They're all four available wherever books are sold. Mm-hmm. Um, and DisneyBooks.com is a great resource to um, point you out to different places. Well, like I mentioned before, you know, th- this is what makes a, a grown man or a grown woman cry because there, there, there's just so much information here about it. And, you know, it just brings back memories of our own childhood when you see the photos. How long did a project like this take? Because, I mean, to me, it, it had to have been five, ten years. You had to have known that the 100-year anniversary was coming up. We definitely did. And I, and I guess in some ways you can say that the archive has always been building towards this, right? <laughs> because their mission is to select, preserve everything that is yeah. relevant to the company's overall story, um, and then to share it in different ways. And so um, when it came time to say, okay, well, how do we share this? Um, we really took a lot of inspiration from the fact that they were putting together their Disney um, 100, the exhibition, which is now open in Philadelphia, and then we'll travel. So that started about three years wow. ago. and. Wow. Um, as it evolved, it really became very clear to us that we wanted the book to be in lockstep with that storytelling. So I would say that they uh, came from the exhibition. Wow. You've got to come back to this show anytime in the future, Jennifer. The door is always going to be open for you. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And you'll be brilliant today, okay? Thank you.